Hello and welcome. This is James from the DSO Imager channel. Uh, today I've got something exciting. I've got a new filter to play with. So uh, back in uh, 2020, Optolong released a filter called the L Extreme, which was a dual band filter that um, blocked out all light except for HA and O3. Optolong wasn't the first company to release a dual band filter like this, but uh, the L Extreme, without a doubt, I think became the most popular uh, version of these. It was a good balance between cost and performance. The band pass on the L Extreme for both HA and O3 were 7 nanometer. And that filter has really gone uh, a long way for unlocking narrowband imaging for one-shot color users. Now the reason this was a big deal for one-shot color users is that um, with uh, traditional single-band narrowband filters you would have to get an HA filter if you want to capture any HA light and the one-shot color cameras with the Bayer matrix on there and uh, one-fourth of all pixels allowing red light in is a very inefficient way to collect uh, HA. And while a dual band filter like this doesn't uh, improve the collection of HA, it does allow you to get O3 while you're getting the HA. So it is, it, it significantly improves the efficiency of getting narrow band data with a one shot color camera. Now, last year, Optolon came out with a new filter called the L Ultimate. It's basically the same as the L Extreme except a much narrower band path. Uh, while the L Extreme was at uh, 7 nanometers, the L Ultimate came in at uh, 3 nanometers. So with that tighter band pass, uh, it's blocking out more light, it's, uh, but it, uh, it should give us a, a more, more contrast. It should really help, especially in light polluted areas or while the moon is out. Uh, the one interesting thing though with the L Ultimate when it came out last year is that it was only available as a 2 inch filter. So just recently, it's like two months ago I think, uh, Optolong had, has finally come out with a 1 and quarter inch version of the L Ultimate. And uh, they had reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in reviewing the filter. Which of course uh, I would be. Uh, I own a L Extreme that I purchased with my own money and I was very happy with that filter. And when the L Ultimate came out though, I was tempted uh, uh, to maybe um, look into buying that one. So I'm really happy that I got one to test out here and we'll see how it goes. So here's the filter in uh, the same style of box uh, that I got for the L-Extreme. And I'll go ahead and open this up and install it in my filter wheel. So this is how it comes. And uh, here's our filter. So I thought this was an op would be a good opportunity to talk about uh, connecting a filter wheel to the one shot color camera or really the, um, the uh, theory behind it or the reasons for it. Uh, I know a lot of people with one shot color cameras they're either screwing the filters directly onto say the reducer or um, they're using a, a filter drawer. Which, by the way, the filter drawers do have an attachment, so you can use the one and a quarter inch uh, filters with those filter drawers. Now, this is a ZWO uh, mini filter wheel. It's a five position filter wheel. I've actually had this filter wheel uh, going back to um, 2017. And um, when I got this ASI 533, let me bring it over here. All right, this, so this is the, the MC, one shot color. Uh, I did right away use it with the filter wheel. Now, why would I use a filter wheel with a uh, one shot color camera? Well, there's a couple of reasons for it. One, there are more than one filter that I use here. All right, so in position one, what you see there is a Optolong uh, luminance filter and I use that filter for UV IR cut. Uh, the main issue here is that the ASI 533 MC doesn't block 
UV and IR uh, on that uh, sensor cover. Uh, interestingly, the ASI 2600 does, but the 533 does not. So if you do have a 533 and you're not running a UV IR cut filter or a luminance filter on there, uh, you definitely need to get one. All right, in position two, uh, that's where my L Extreme currently resides. And so I do plan to do a comparison between the L Extreme and the L Ultimate. Uh, in position three, uh, I believe that is an astronomic S2 filter. Now, why would I have an S2 filter in here? Well, it's simple. If I want to do Hubble Palette SHO, I need to get S2 light. Uh, yes, there are ways in editing that you can simulate uh, the Hubble Palette with uh, the dual band filter only with your HA and O3, but my preference is to get real S2 light. Uh, S2 uh, signal typically isn't that strong, and I find that you don't need to get a whole lot of it, and so while it's super inefficient uh, running a single band pass filter just to collect S2, uh, it still gives a nice um, Hubble palette result with this one-shot color camera. Now, what would be really nice is if uh, Optolong came out with a filter that passed S2 and O3. And that way, while gathering the S2 data, I would get more O3 data. So, Optolong, if you're watching this, please consider putting out an S2 O3 filter. I know there's a couple of other companies out there that have S2 O3 filters and I just think having an Optolong to go along with the other Optolong filters I have in here would be awesome. Uh, in position 4 I have an SV Boney CLS filter. Uh, they had sent me this filter a couple years ago to test. Uh, I'm in a Bortle 5 and I don't really think uh, a light pollution type filter is really needed for my area. Uh, so I don't usually use it. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, Optolon came out with a new light pollution filter. It might be interesting if I can get one of those to play with and add it to this filter wheel. And uh, there you see position 5 is empty. So that is where we'll put the ultimate. I always find these a little fiddly to thread on sometimes. There we go. Alright, so I was talking about uh, filter wheels with one-shot color cameras. And by having the filter wheel, you're automating the, um, the um, filter change. So there's definitely a usefulness here. If you're trying to manually swap out the filters, either by screwing them onto your reducer or using the filter drawer, and you're imaging throughout the night, you've got to come out and change your filter. And examples of where this could be really useful with the automation is when the moon is out, right? So let's say the moon is up at the beginning of the evening and uh, it's going to set around midnight or 1 a.m. So you may want to gather data with your L Extreme filter and then after the moon sets you can switch over to a luminance filter and get your broadband data. You can do two different targets. It's pretty typical for me even with my monochrome setups that I will have a moon target where I'm collecting narrowband data and then after the moon sets, I have the software, my capture software set, to slew over to a broadband target and grab broadband data. So having that filter wheel uh, gives you that option. And um, I mean, nothing is going to increase your efficiency in capturing data than letting uh, the system run all night. The next thing to consider is flat frames. Now, I know that uh, some people uh, think that cameras such as the 533 you don't need to worry about calibration frames and you know what on a really small refractor you can probably get away without your dark frames and without your flat frames uh, but on your larger scopes the uh, dust motes and blemishes on the optics 
are very noticeable in your final image and you need flats to correct that. Right now I have this camera and I plan to use this filter wheel with this filter on my 8 inch Celestron Edge HD and you have to run flats on that with that kind of optics because little dust motes look like giant donuts. So the thing is if you're using a filter drawer or you're manually screwing your filter into the reducer each time you move the, the image train around you have to take a fresh set of flats. Uh, so I mean again we're going into uh, an efficiency time management issue. I mean are you taking flats at the end of every image session before you go to bed? Uh, it's just it really cuts back on your time. With the filter wheel because the filter wheels movement is repeatable uh, the orientation of the filters don't change you're going to be able to collect uh, your data consistently and you won't have to reshoot your flats. So I typically reuse the same flats uh, until new blemishes show up that I need a new set of flats. So I've gone several weeks without having to reshoot flats. So that is also a very handy feature of having a filter wheel. So in my opinion, those two reasons alone are enough to warrant a uh, filter wheel. And having this, uh, this L Ultimate filter now available in one and a quarter inch size really makes it easy. So if you're running a camera like the ASI 533MC, maybe you're running a camera with the IMX585 chip in there, and even up to the crop size centers, so 294MC, 1600MC if anyone's running those, uh, all those cameras work fine with a one and quarter inch filter and uh, it really will, uh, if you're not using one of these yet, I really encourage it because it'll, it'll just take your imaging uh, to the next level as far as time management and automation go. Alright, I think that's all I have for tonight. Uh, unfortunately, the weather looks to be cloudy and rainy for the next week. Uh, but I will have this uh, set up ready on my Edge 8, and as soon as I get a clear night, I will start taking pictures of it. I've got some targets in mind already. Uh, one of them is Thor, uh, Thor's helmet. I did shoot Thor's helmet with the L-Extreme. That was one of the first targets I shot with that filter, and it came out really nice. So it's going to be cool to see how it compares with the L-Ultimate. Uh, if you have any suggestions for targets, uh, drop a note in the comments down there and I'll take a look at, look at them. Uh, this is an Edge 8, so some of the planetary nebula are options. Uh, personally, I find that these dual band filters work really well on oxygen rich targets. So that's what I'm going to be looking for. Uh, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this. And also, just throwing this out there, I do have some affiliate links in the description so if you buy any gear from say High Point Scientific and you use the affiliate link down there I will get a small commission on that and any money that I get uh, on that will go towards this channel. Okay so with that have a good evening and clear skies.